Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing an unboxing and review of this RTV S10 Android TV box. So stay tuned. I've seen this on the internet not long ago and I thought I'd order two. So let's get cracking. Let's rip this thing open. S10s, you only need to open one. I paid £39.79 for this. That's around about $51.93. I'm going to be putting the price and the link where you can get it from in the information section below. So let's have a look. The TV box itself is just wrapped up there. Let's put it aside for now. I have a dust wipe, a DC 5V power adapter, UK, HDMI cable. I have a remote control. But yeah, pretty basic remote control. So that's the user manual. Put that back in the box for now. Let's have a closer look at the box itself. I'm going to peel them off just to see the material. Well, I must say, it absolutely looks stunning. Let's have a quick look at this bad boy. You have the remote sensor just there at the front. You have two USB imports at the side a reset button, you have the power adapter, the AV, HDMI, optical and Ethernet. You have another two USB inserts and a memory card insert. At the bottom we have some vent ports. I've come across a few Android boxes in the time but this seems to be of a very high standard. It looks absolutely beautiful. Right? Let's have a close look at the remote control. So it's like a hard plastic, just a simple remote control with a cursor button. As well then using the remote control, I would get yourself a few of these bad boys. It's a mini wireless keyboard. You can basically surf the net, use the touchpad, use this for gaming, writing. It lights up in three different colours and I will put the review on later. The specifications on this little Android box are as follows on the list just here. Android 7.1.1 as a CPU of Amalogic S912 Octa-Cure Amacortex as a GPU Amali 750 MHz as 3D graphics support as memory of DDR4 2GB and a flash memory of 16GB extended 32GB. So let's just get rid of these specs for now. I'm going to connect this Android box now to my Sony Android TV. By the way guys, it's a really, really good TV. I'm going to leave a link in the end of the video for it. It's a KDL 50W80. Let's get going and let's have a look at this box and see what it's capable of. So with the Android box now ready to go and all hooked up, all that I need to do now is turn it on. Oh well, not so, because there's no batteries. And with the batteries now inserted, let's turn this box on. Immediately, you'll see the S10 logo, followed by the Android sign. But the startup screen seems to be normal and basic, with YouTube, Google Play Store and Netflix, as well as many other apps scattered around the front screen. And after quickly updating this Android box after startup, this Android box is now running Android Nugget. My very first impressions of the remote control is that it doesn't have a very good signal. You must be stuck directly in line to be able to use the remote control correctly. And when I bought this TV box, it did state that it did have Kodi built in, yet I had to download it via APAC file and sideload it onto the box itself. I did download it through Google Play Store first, but down I found there was a problem with the app icons. They didn't exist on the menus on the TV box. I had to download this simple TV launcher instead. I'm now going to show you what the stream is like through YouTube on this TV box. But after using the cursor on this remote control, I must say it's pretty bad and I'll be using the mini keyboard which I suggested before and again I'll leave a link in the description below where you can buy it from. There doesn't seem to be a problem playing a full HD video from my YouTube channel, go get yours, there's no flickering, no pauses and the picture is clear and precise. With that being said, let's test this sucker out on Netflix and we're just going to choose a movie and see what this one's like here. Again, the streaming is clear and precise and skipping through the movie is fast and doesn't seem to buffer that much. Flicking back to the main menu now, we're going to see what the internet's like on the Internet Explorer provided. 
Let's just type in the Go Get Yours YouTube channel name here in the search bar. And when we're finally on YouTube, which we are now, we'll scroll up and down and see how responsive it is. And yes, everything seems to be working fine. So we're just going to back up here and we're now going to search out the Go Get Yours website. And again, on here, everything seems to be working fine and smooth. Going back to the TV service, we're going to choose this Cloud TV and we're going to play a random channel which is this one just here. You may take a few seconds. And yeah, not so bad. It's playing smooth and clear. So we're gonna back up and choose a, maybe a sports channel next. Oh, even better. Well, it's the same here. It's one in smooth and yeah, clear. Oh, this, mm, interesting, I'll be playing that later. So let's go back out and choose, choose a UK TV service, which is on the Film on Live app. And this is where you'll get all your free view channels from the UK. And yeah, running smooth and clear on the streaming services. So we're gonna download the Geekbench 4 app from the Google Play Store. And once it's done downloading, it's going pretty fast. We're going to open it up and we're going to get going with the benchmark test. Well, now the results have been, I must say, they really are poor compared to other TV boxes out there. 2,486. Wow. With comparisons, this is low. We're now going to download Asphalt Airborne 8 in the background and then we're going to connect our third party controller to this TV box. And as it goes, it doesn't seem to want to locate this controller. So let me try our PS4 controller and see if it has any good luck with that one. And well, we have left off because this PS4 controller is now hooked up to this TV box. But does it want to work though? Well, the answer is no, it doesn't. The same thing with a third party controller. It doesn't work on this TV box, but it does work on previous ones I've tried. Now, if you want to know how to hook up this PS4 controller to PS3 system, look at a link in the description below. While this controller is left useless, we're going to be playing the game Asphalt Airborne 8. We're looking for a clue on how to control this game on this TV box. If anyone's got any suggestions though, we're welcomed in the comments section below. I must say that the graphics look perfectly fine, everything's smooth and there's no flickering. It's just a controller. I mean, look, it says turn your phone left and right. It's not a phone, it's an Android TV box, so how is it getting it mixed up? I just don't know. Now the mini keyboard is again not working on this game. So that's a waste of time. And the PS4 controller I've hooked up three times off screen. It does confirm it's been hooked up to the TV box but doesn't want to work. So I'm just going to flip it. I must say that Cody starts up pretty fast on his Android TV box, but due to copyright content, I can't actually play any movies or TV shows. You'll just have to trust me when I say that the streaming works perfectly fine and doesn't seem to have any problems with the buffering. So what's my overall verdict on this S10 Android TV box? Well, the looks are stunning and the streaming is fantastic. The internet is great and the downloads from Google Play Store are speedy. It's just the games that I've downloaded. I keep being requested to press the buttons on the screen as though it's an Android tablet or phone. Yet this is an Android TV box where it requires you to have a controller of some sort. One of the second things is the remote control where you need to be stood directly in line to grab a signal. And the last three things are is that Cody was already listed as being on the TV box when I first bought it, yet I had to sideload it on myself via the APAC files. Then I had to download my own launch menu so I could see my downloaded app icons. And then lastly, my memory card, my 16 gigabyte memory card. In order for me to show you a video on Cody, I inserted the card and that card just went in and never came back out. It just dropped right into the box. So out of all this, I will give this TV box just for the streaming services alone. I'd give it five out of 10. Well, I hope you liked my video. If you want to see a full review of this Sony Android TV pictured here, or the PS4 controller to PS3 system hookup, then I'll leave all links in the description just below. Please share, please leave a like, and please subscribe. Thanks for watching. Peace.